Hi everybody, so this month we're going to go into just kind of nutrition questions answered. It's a lot of questions that I hear floating around the bend a lot, um, just like your basic things. Um, some of them may not be so basic, but um, I've just got five questions this time that I hear a lot about. Um, so question number one is, are there benefits to cutting out carbs? Yes and no. Um, it's really going to depend. Carbs are the body's and brain's fuel system. So if you cut them out entirely, you're probably going to notice some side effects like fatigue, general malaise, headaches, grumpiness, all of that kind of ugh feeling. Um, remember that carbs are not created equal. Fruits and veggies are all carbs, but so are chips and pasta. Um, you need to find the balance between them and what works best with your body because everyone's going to run a little bit differently from each other. And what works for some isn't going to work for all. Some people need more, some people need less. I'm more of a carb-focused person, but my carbs come from fruits and vegetables. They don't come from grains. The only grains that I eat are oats. Um, so most of mine come from, from there um, because I get the extra fiber and the extra other um, antioxidants and vitamins and minerals that are in those things um, versus getting virtually nothing from pasta besides the physical carb. Um, two, can intermittent fasting help with weight loss? Initially, yes. However, it isn't something that I recommend that you do for the rest of your life. Initially, you're going to lose weight until you plateau. So a lot of that's going to be water weight. Um, and then that will either require you to either amp up your activity or eat less. And let's be honest, no one wants to eat less food. We love food. We always want to add in, never subtract. Um, fasting is a great way to learn your hunger cues though. So if you have no idea what those are, then maybe try that so you can really learn what your true hunger cues are and what your true sati uh, satiation cues are. Because satiation is different than a feeling of fullness, is different than the feeling of stuffed. Um, it's just satiation is I'm not receiving that hunger cue anymore. And sometimes that can take about 20 minutes to go from your gut to your brain on that HPI access. It just depends. So take your time when you're eating, eat slow. That will also help. Um, yeah, so that's that one. Uh, what diet actually works? The one that you'll follow, um, we change and grow as humans. And that also includes what we eat based off of what our bodies need. Your dietary needs will change with you throughout your life. Um, sometimes you'll need more, sometimes you'll need less. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll be able, you know, my diet as a teenager is completely different than my diet now. Um, and I say diet as in lifestyle, um, not as in diet, because I don't like that word, is there's so much negativity around that. Um, you wanna make sure that you don't wanna restrict yourself from entire food groups or restrict your calories to basically nothing. Um, I would recommend eating a whole foods diet. I always recommend that. That's going to give you plenty of fruits and vegetables, fresh meats and dairy if you're not lactose intolerant, um, and whole grains. Again, also with that, as long as you are not gluten intolerant, um, make sure to always have a carb, a protein, and a fat each time you eat to make sure that you keep yourself satisfied. Should I track my calories or my macros? Depends on your goal. If you have a history of ED or disordered eating, I would stay away from it um, unless you're going to use it temporarily to just be like, okay, I just want to know if I'm like not eating enough or if I'm getting enough protein. Um, that's the way that I use it. I do not personally like to track um, because of the history of disordered eating that I have. That is why I use hunger cues instead because that my body tells me all of that stuff and it took a while to kind of get to that. Um, if you have a specific goal in mind, say it's get stronger or changing your body composition, again, we're going to need that information to see if you're under or overeating and if you're eating enough protein throughout the day because most people don't. That's really the only thing that you should be tracking to make sure. And then once you have that kind of set, then I wouldn't track anymore. It's normally no more than a couple of weeks max. Um, how do I stop a binge is the last question here. Um, allow your binge foods to be in your house. I cannot say that enough. Taking them away may only make you crave them more, even though there's more steps to going out to the store and getting whatever you want. We do this to take away the binge food as being something special. A lot of the times we binge because we're like, oh my God, it's not going to be here. I have to eat the whole thing. Um, and it, it'll lose its power over you. If you always have it and you always know that you have it, um, it's just going to become food. 
like a regular schmegular food. Um, takes, it's going to take some time. But eventually you don't do it anymore because you're like, I there's no value to this for me anymore. And it's kind of like that brain trick that's going on. Um, a lot of it's a habit. And again, unfortunately, it's hard to break that cycle and create a new one. It's going to take some time. Uh, a good way to keep from binging is especially at night for those of you that binge at night is to make sure that you're eating enough protein throughout the day. As I said earlier, meals, including snacks, should have a fat, a carb, and a protein. Uh, if you still want the food because you have a craving for it, absolutely have it, but make sure it's a complete meal so you aren't eating the entire bag. So for example, say you want chips. Awesome. Pour some into a bowl. That's your carb. Now we need to add something fresh. So we'll call these tortilla chips. We're going to add in avocado. We're going to add in some salsa to get in that healthy fat from the avocado. Uh, maybe we're going to have some chicken and some black beans on the side or on the top to add in protein. And now you have a complete meal. Is it nachos? Absolutely. Are nachos a complete meal? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You can make pizza a whole meal. You have your carb. Load that crap up with vegetables. Put some chicken on it or whatever meat that you like. That is a complete meal. That is a complete meal. Um, burgers, same thing. You have the bun. There's your carb. You have the meat patty. Maybe you have cheese. It's going to be your fat. And then you have vegetables on top of that. Again, a complete meal. If we have complete meals, we're going to be satisfied. We are going to be less likely to binge. And that is how that works. If you have any uh, more questions, again, I'm going to do this throughout the month of July. Um, so if you have any questions that I did not yet answer, please comment below and I will definitely answer those for you.